Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers for Wednesday, April 14th. Blessed are the humble, for they are close to the sacred earth, from Matthew 5, 3, 5, excuse me, 5, 5. It is in the depths of life that we find you, at the heart of this moment, at the center of our soul, deep in the earth and its eternal stirring, stirrings. You are the ground of all being, the wellspring of time, womb of the earth the seed force of stars. And so at the opening of this day, we wait, not for blessings from afar, but for you, the very soil of our soul, the early freshness of morning, the first breath of day. Let's be still and aware of God's presence within and all around. And I'm changing it up again. I've chosen, uh, let's see, it would be from last week's um, meditations from Richard Rohr's Center for Action and Con Contemplation. Um, and the theme for the week is All Will Be Well. And this particular meditation from Monday, April 5th, is called A Mystic for Our Times. And he writes, My friend Matthew Fox published a book during the COVID-19 pandemic about Julian of Norwich. I love Julian's teachings because she focuses on God's infinite love, goodness, and mercy. Even during the Black Death, the bubonic plague, in which perhaps a third of the world's population died, even during her own near-death experience, when she received visions of Jesus' brutal crucifixion, Julian trusts that, quote, all will be well, end quote. Matthew Fox shows how Julian is a mystic for our own time. This is what he writes. A time of crisis and chaos, the kind that a pandemic brings, is, among other things, a time to call on our ancestors for their deep wisdom. Not just knowledge, but true wisdom is needed in a time of death and profound change. For at such times we are beckoned not simply to return to the immediate past that we will, that that which we remember fondly as the normal, but to reimagine a new future, a renewed humanity, a more just and, oh boy, I lost a line, so I'll just carry on. Um, he talk, talks about um, Julian of Norwich referring to her as a stunning thinker, a profound theologian and mystic, a fully awake woman, and a remarkable guide with a mighty vision to share for 21st century seekers. She's a special chaperone for those navigating a time of pandemic. Julian knew a thing or two about sheltering in place because she was an anchoress, that is, someone who, by definition, is literally walled up inside a small space for life. Julian also knew something about fostering a spirituality that can survive the trauma of a pandemic. While others all about her were freaking out about nature gone awry, Julian kept her spiritual and intellectual composure, staying grounded and true to her belief in the goodness of life, creation, and humanity, and in 
no, and in no uncertain terms, inviting others to do the same. Julian's response to the pandemic, as we know it from her two books, is amazingly grounded in a love of life and gratitude. Instead of running from death, she actually prayed to enter it, enter into it, and is from the experience of death all around her and me meditating on the cruel crucifixion of Christ that she interpreted as a communal, not just a personal event that her visions arrived. Our sister and ancestor Julian is eager not only to speak to us today, but to shout at us, albeit in a gentle way, to wake up and go deep to face the darkness and dig down and find goodness, joy, and awe, and to go to work to defend Mother Earth and all her creatures, stripping ourselves of racism, sexism, nationalisms, and anthropocentrism, sectarianism, anything that interferes with our greatness as human beings, and to connect anew to the sacredness of life. A mystic of our times, Julian of Norwich. And from Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise God from heaven. Praise him from the mountaintops. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his warriors. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you morning stars. Praise him, high heaven. Praise him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, oh, let them praise the name of God. He spoke the word, and there they were. He set them in place from all time to eternity. He gave his orders, and that's it. Praise God from earth, you sea dragons, you fathomless ocean deeps. Fire and hail, snow and ice, hurricanes obeying his orders. Mountains and all hills, apple orchards and cedar forests. Wild beasts and herds of cattle, snakes and birds in flight. Earth's kings and all races, leaders and important people robust men and women in their prime, and yes, gray beards and little children. Let them praise the name of God. It's the only name worth praising. His radiance exceeds anything in earth and sky. He's built a monument, his very own people. Praise from all who love God, Israel's children, intimate friends of God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Rick, Luetta, and Rick. If you haven't been able to tell, I'm coming to you from Fort Flagler State Park. I switched up the view because the other view is a lot of trucks and trailers. And this way, if you can maybe see a little bit of water out there. And today's poem is called Realization by Marilyn Nelson. Three-quarter size, full size would break the heart. She, still bare breast from the auction block, sits staring, perhaps realizing what will happen to them next. There is no child, though there must be a child who will be left behind or who was auctioned separately. Her arms are limp, deflated. Her thin hands lie still in surrender. She cowers at her side, his head under her arm, his body pressed to hers, like a boy hiding behind his mother. He should protect this woman. He is strong, his shoulder and arm muscled from hard work, his hand thickened by labor on her thigh as if to comfort, though he can't protect. His brow is furrowed, 
his eyes blank, unfocused. What words are there to describe hopelessness? A word that means both bull whipped and spat upon. Is there a name for mute, depthless abyss? A word that means where the hell are you, God? What would they ask God if they could believe? But how can they believe while the blue sky smiles innocently, pretends nothing is wrong? They stood stripped up there as they were described like animals who couldn't understand how cheap a life can be made. Their naked feet, her collarbone, the vein traveling his bicep, Gussie's answer to precedence on Mount Rushmore, to monumental generals whose stars and sabers say black pain, did not then, and still does not, matter. And the author writes about this poem. Realization <clears throat> is an ex-phrasic poem, a description of an almost life-size portrayal of a black couple created in the late 1930s by the great Harlem Renaissance sculptor Augusta Savage, whom this poem calls Gussie. I take Savage's piece of sculpture as depicting the scene following a human auction, the realization of the title naming their understanding of what their future holds. This poem will appear in my book called Augusta Savage, The Shape of a Life, which was released in, will be released in September. So Marilyn Nelson is the author of over eight books of poetry, um, as well as many collections of verse for children and young adults. Um, and she lives in Connecticut realization by Marilyn Nelson. So let's reflect on our meditation from Richard Rohr and his friend Matthew Fox, Psalm 148, and our poem, Realization. For everything that emerges from the earth, thanks be to you, O God. Holy root of being, sacred sap that rises, full-bodied fragrance of earth's unfolding form, may we know that we are of you. May we know that we are in you. May we know that we are one with you, together one. Guide us as nations so that what is deepest Open us as peoples to what is first. Lead us as a world to what is dearest, that we may know the holiness of wholeness, that we may learn the strength of humility, that together we may live close to the earth and grow in grounded glory. Let's pray for the coming day and for peace. May the deep blessings of earth be with us. May the fathomless soundings of seas surge in our soul. May boundless stretches of the universe echo in our depths to open us to wonder, to strengthen us for love, to humble us with gratitude, that we may find ourselves in one another, that we may lose ourselves in gladness, that we give ourselves to peace. Amen. May you have a blessed day. We're hoping for a less blustery day. Um, 
I'm looking out right now and I think that might be an eagle soaring, playing in the wind. Uh, and the tops of the trees are moving, but that's just about it. We're hoping to go for a bike ride on the Discovery Trail and uh, with our friends. May you have a blessed day and uh, may it be a blessing to you and you a blessing to the day and all you create and make. I'll see you on Friday.